Hey guys, welcome back to another lesson. Today I'd like to show you how to play a simple but pleasing piano riff that sounds like this. Now the lesson is going to be divided into two parts. In the first, I'm going to slowly walk you through what I've played so you can replicate it on your side. In the second part, we're going to delve a little bit deeper into some of the ideas behind this riff, so you can incorporate them into your own playing. Let's get started. The Riff starts out with a small introduction. Now, while I'm playing here, you can just rest your right hand on these four notes. Thumb on C, uh, second finger on G, fourth on B, and pinky on the C, upper C here. And what you're playing at the beginning is or a bit faster. What follows are four repetitions of the same idea, and what we're actually playing are three chords. F major, to G major, to A minor. Now notice that the first chord, the F, starts on the beat, but both the G and the A minor are syncopated. This means that they start slightly before the beat. So, for the F chord, what I'm playing is really I'm rolling out these notes. I hit the F and the G, uh, sorry, and the C simultaneously go up playing a C and an A, and then play a C and a G. The next chord, the G major, is played similarly. So again, I hit the G in the left hand and the D in the right hand, simultaneously, and then roll out the notes. The notes are played evenly, both rhythmically, rhythmically and in terms of the intensity or strength. The last chord, the A minor chord, is played out by first hitting the C note with the thumb, like this, and then rolling out the three notes in the left hand. That's it. Once you play these four beats, you repeat the introduction motif in the right hand. Now, instead of repeating the exact introduction motif, you can just switch the first note for the C. So instead of playing, you can play just like this. Just switch the first note, the G, with the C. Putting all of this together, you get the initial riff. Pretty simple. Now let's take a deeper dive into what we're playing and some of the ideas behind it. As I've previously mentioned, what we're doing is we're playing a simple chord progression, going from an F major 
to a G major to an A minor. Now, for all three chords, we can play in the right hand either a C or a G. Now, of course, we can also play other notes, but it turns out that these two notes really meld well with the underlying chords. It's interesting because when you think about it, this C really isn't a part of the G major chord, but it still kind of works. This is kind of a general feature when looking at scales. In this particular case, we're playing, well, you can either think of this as a C major scale or really an A minor scale. But if you think of this as a C major scale, what you're doing is you're playing the root, the first, and the fifth, the G. And it turns out that both the first degree of the scale and the fifth degree kind of work well with almost any of the chords you can build on the C major scale. So. Sounds pretty good. Now let's take a deeper look at the left hand. Now we're not playing the chords in their simple root form. Rather what we're doing is we're taking the root form, taking the center note for the F and moving it up an octave. And this opens up the chord. We can do the same for the G major chord. And we can do the same for the A minor chord. So take the A minor in the root form, take the middle note, move it up an octave. We have a slight variation by which we don't play the middle note of the A, but really kind of a sus2 version. And we're building on the right hand to play the C and the G, the C being the this middle note here. So the, so the right hand sort of fills in some of the so-called missing notes on the left hand in this voicing, which would be the C. The last sort of idea that we can put in here is that it turns out that not only the first and the fifth degrees of the C major scale work well with these three chords, but also the second and seventh degrees, being the D and the B. So, for the F major, for the G major, and for the A minor. You can just play any of them really, and it sounds pretty good. So z these three ideas sort of help you turn a simple, sounding chord progression into something that is much richer and more interesting. And it hopefully gives you something to play with. That's it. I hope you've learned something interesting and I'll see you next time.